नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर द एजेंडा ऑफ टूडेज डिस्कशन इज ओलंपिक्स यू हर्ड मी राइट वी आर गोन टू डिस्कस अबाउट ओलंपिक्स नाउ यू आर थिंकिंग सर वाई दिस डिस्कशन यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अ बिग न्यूज दैट रिसेंटली द इंटरनेशनल ओलंपिक कमिटी हैज डिसाइडेड टू इंक्लूड फाइव न्यू स्पोर्ट्स फॉर द ओलंपिक्स ट्वेंटी इन एल वन अमॉन्ग दम इज क्रिकेट सो यू माइट एक्सपेक्ट अ मेडल इन एल ए अपार्ट फ्रॉम क्रिकेट the other sports have been included which are softball flag football lacrosse and squash so probably we might expect expect some medals in lacrosse and squash as well because we have some prominent players in those sports as well but i'm not here to talk about cricket or those sports i am here to discuss about india's big big announcement that we are going to bid for the 2036 olympics and our discussion is connected to that itself now you're thinking so why did you choose this topic is it even relevant for us from upsc civil services perspective you can see there is a lot of news report that india is going to bid for olympics in 2036 although specifically the city has not been mentioned but there is a lot of news with respect to developments in gujarat probably ahmedabad might be the host city now so is it relevant for us let me give you an example and prove that yes it is highly relevant for us from upsc civil services perspective now this is the essay question paper if i'm not wrong from 2014 and the third topic i want you to focus on this third topic this talks about 50 golds in olympics can this be a reality and you have to write an essay on this okay i think this essay is even relevant today because the number of gold medals that we win in olympics has been a quite dismal our performance in olympics olympics is slowly and steadily improving but even after i would say 100 years of olympics uh, not a lot of improvement has taken place yes we have done tremendous job in the recent asian games our target was to cross 100 we have breached 100 if i'm not wrong 107 medals in total but this is still i would say a far fetched dream if, if i just delete this 50 golds in olympics and if i say write uh, 2036 india olympics okay 2036 india olympics or if it is ahmedabad whenever the news comes if it is ahmedabad olympics we can write that can this be a reality for india don't you think it's a decent enough essay topic or there can be a stand alone question for mains if you ask me that uh, should india host olympics yes or no for a country like india which has many social obligations you need to analyze if it's a good decision to host olympics or not you need to know both the sides of the picture and in this video lecture we are going to understand this itself india has announced the bid it's very good we will talk about how india is going to reach there what are the processes through which international olympic committee decides on the host nation or the host city and then at the end of the discussion we'll try to analyze both sides of the story we'll talk about some of the examples from previous olympics and hosting olympics is it really profitable hosting olympics what are the pros and cons of it all right now to get to know all that information stay with me till the very end all right let's begin but before that to all the upsc civil services aspirants study iq's batch 2 of p2i is beginning from october 23rd so you have a few days to enroll yourself this would be ideal for any college student who's in third year final year or any homemaker working professional according to your convenience you can select the language or the format of teaching and content as well as the validity longer validity programs are available the entire program is quite affordable the range starts from 23999 only it includes everything it includes the prelims test series it includes the mains residential program if you clear the prelims examination one to one men mentorship complete syllabus coverage the whole shebang it starts only from 23999 just visit our website studyiq.com enroll i'll see you in the class all right right let's begin as i told you prime minister during the international olympic committee meet he announced when the meeting was going on at that time itself news came that india will formally bid for 2036 olympics the prime minister of india narendra modi said that india is not going to leave any stone unturned for hosting or in hosting olympics 2036 so preparations will be on full swing very very soon in fact for couple of years now india is planning there were news reports that india might bid for the 2036 olympics but now 
formal announcement has come from the heads that is prime minister the question in your mind right now is sir so why 2036 we are right now in 2023 and you you are talking about something which is ahead say almost 13 years ahead so why why because already the olympics which is coming going to come next year it is already decided in paris paris 2024 not just 2024 but 28 has also been decided it is in la usa los angeles and in this 2028 election cricket sorry olympics cricket has been included not election olympics cricket has been included here that would be 2020 cricket apart from cricket some other sports have been included so this is going to be first global spectacle where almost in 100 years of olympic history cricket will now be included that's why we might have a very great potential to win a gold medal by this time hopefully of course uh, I, I would say hopefully indian team would be uh, really good by that time also some of the stalwarts would not be there i would say uh, virat kohli rohit sharma etc the the uh, i would say experienced players would not be present till 2028 i i guess uh, but our team is still strong right so we might win a medal apart from that even 2032 olympics is also decided it's in brisbane australia now the 2036 2036 after the 2040 these are some some olympics which are still pending and that's why 2036 ahmedabad is it really possible now if you see the olympic games 2024 paris los angeles 2028 brisbane 2032 it is decided it uh, there will be winter olympics in milano cortina winter olympics for 2030 still not decided that will come okay for winter olympics they decide a little late that's very fine for youth olympics it is going to happen in gangwon 2024 and dakar in 2026 in fact india has also said that we are going to bid for the youth olympics for 2028 as well which might serve as a template of preparation for the Olympics as well. So let's wait and watch what exactly happens. But I hope now it's clear why 2036, because the other dates are already decided. The question comes up. Sir, we are formally, we are formally uh, announcing it. Uh, there are many countries which have offered help. Russia has already offered help last year itself when there was news that India is going to bid for Olympics. Russia. Russian sports ministry, they had offered that we have experience of hosting Olympic Games, Moscow Games, you know, in Russia had happened, right? Multiple times, Russia has hosted Olympic Games. So, we will be able to help India and offer had come last year itself. So, let's see if India will take help or not. But the question is, how is a host selected? How is a host selected? The host is selected finally by the International Olympic Committee. Now, recently, IOC, National Olympic Committee, it was holding its 141st session from 15 to 17 October in India, in Mumbai. Now, this is the authority which, have, which will have a final say regarding who is going to become the host. Under this, there are various committees, commissions set up. For example, there is a future host commission, uh, which, will, which will, I would say, more or less finalize. And later on, there would be a vote which happens. Let me tell you the procedure, how exactly things run. But before that, what is International Olympic Committee? It is a global organization, I would say truly global, global organization which represents the Olympic Games and it is considered as the leader of Olympic movement. It has 107 members from different countries. It is responsible for, the, it is responsible for uh, uh, maintaining the games, hosting the games, selecting the host, etc. All the coordination is done through IOC. India also has a representation here. Generally, the representatives in IOC from different countries are former sports person, former athletes, someone connected to sports administration. Uh, from Indian side, it is Mrs. Neeta Ambani. You can see in the picture, she is right in the middle here. She is the India's representative at the International Olympic Committee. Now, it is the IOC which decides who is going to host. How does the process run? Please remember, a host can be a nation. It can be a region, it can be a city, but generally, generally, it is more specific to cities, but it can also be a region. That is not an issue. All right. So, a city or a region, whichever is interested, the first thing that they do is they say that we are interested in hosting Olympics to their own local Olympic committee. This NOC is not no objection certificate, but it's called National Olympic Committee. From Indian side, this is basically IOA, Indian Olympic Association. So, any city, any region which wants to host, which wants to host Olympics, they reach out to their nations, in their nation's Olympic committee or their nation's Olympic organization or association. And this 
NOC, the National Olympic Committee, they will formally request to the National Olympic Committee. Now, when the formal request goes, there is no need to announce it publicly as well. Please remember, nothing is final, nothing is final, it's just the beginning. So, there is no need to announce anything officially as well. What the IOC says, International Olympic Committee, even a, a very simple request which is not officially announced from the, from the nation's Olympic Committee, if it comes, we accept it, then the process starts. Then the process starts. Now, what is the process? The first idea in the early stages is the IOCs, different committees, commission, the future host commission, they will be in going through something called as continuous dialogue with the interested party, with the interested city. Now, this continuous dialogue is something which is non-specific. That means here the IOC will simply see the proposal. What is the proposal of that particular city? What are the developments from that particular city? All those things would be decided. The proposal will be studied. If there is an issue with proposal, the IOC will continuously help. And please remember, this is going to be non-specific. Non-specific means there is no guarantee that during the continuous dialogue process, whichever city is in dialogue with the IOC, with the IOC committees, they, they would not be only talking about, say, one specific Olympics. It may be 2036 or the IOC may say that you, you will be ready for 2040 or you may prepare for 2044. It's non-specific. But looking at the preparation, looking at the proposal, looking at the plans of the city and of the nation, then the future host commission, future host commission, they will finalize some cities, some applicants to have a targeted dialogue. Now, when this next step moves, the targeted dialogue. Now, this is more specific to the year of the Olympics. That means the IOC executive board will now become more specific and they say that this is a very seriously interested party and then we are supposed to help them. Basically, we are supposed to look at their case. So, this is the first step. Now, if you ask me a question, sir, how long this continuous dialogue goes? There is no fixed time period, right? It can go on for months, it can go on for years as well. But for this particular process, for Indian process now, I would say India is interested for 2036. The continuous dialogue is going to progress almost till 2025, I may say. Why? Because in 2025, there is International Olympic Committee elections and after that election only, any decision can be taken. But I hope it's clear to you that the steps that go on is first, the interest is shown. Once the interest is shown, the first thing is continuous dialogue, which would be rather non-specific. Then a targeted dialogue, which is much more specific. Once this targeted dialogue begins, then the government and the cities, they have to give many assurances. Now, after the targeted dialogue, there would be some final applicants and for them, for them, a voting would happen on the host city. Majority, majority votes have to be garnered out of the 107. Half of those votes should come for one particular party, one particular interested city or party. Then they can, they will be selected as a host. But please remember, please remember the time period is quite flexible. There is no standard date on which this would be mentioned. In fact, in fact, if you look at the summer and the winter Olympics in general, they are decided four to seven years before, all right? Almost seven years before, seven years before they would be decided. In fact, this time has come down drastically. Uh, say, for example, Brisbane, Brisbane 2032 was decided 11 years before, 11 years before. So, in general, say, uh, say for example, I told you about these Olympics. So, Brisbane, Paris was decided seven years before in 2017 itself. Los Angeles was decided in 2020-21. At, at that time itself, Brisbane was also decided. So, Brisbane's case, it came 11 years before that. So, this continuous dialogue and target dialogue, they are quite flexible. And it is the International Olympic Committee Executive Board, which will continuously monitor. They, they will have committees. Uh, once the host nation is declared, then their work would be continuously monitored their work would be continuously monitored. And if there is some sort of course correction needed, then they might also suggest course correction. Please remember, please remember, there are some new norms, standards which have come since 2020. If you are thinking that once the host nation is declared, will the host nation create the infrastructure for sports? No, there is no need to create the infrastructure. These days, in the new norms since 2020, there is no infrastructure building that is specifically required. What the IOC says, if you already have existing facilities, you will be using them, you will be revamping them. If at all they are needed, then in and around the city, you can create further infrastructure. 
there are also some new norms which have come up with respect to sustainability and development plans by keeping the local population in the mind so what is the process now this is the process future post elections what does it run first the interested party as i told you you will show the interest then a continuous dialogue with the interested party with will start okay now this interest it need not be announced publicly right need not be announced publicly it depends on the country right now we have announced publicly that we are interested so we'll be going through continuous dialogue again non addition specific it will not be specific to 2036 so ioc would be helping us they will say probably looking at the proposal etc if you are ready for 2036 or not those inputs will come then the ioc executive board then shall move towards the targeted dialogue now targeted dialogue is much more addition specific which year now we are bidding for 2036 now once we are finalized for targeted dialogues after that after that we are supposed to give certain assurances in fact in fact what this host committee will look into what they will look into they will look into the city's capacity and infrastructure to hold the olympics do they have sports infrastructure do they have quality sports infrastructure can they host large number of visitors can they host large number of tourists can they host media do they have uh, transportation facilities do they have accommodation facilities do they have proper security and protection which will be provided apart from that from 2020 sustainability has also become one of the aspects and once, as I told you, this targeted dialogue begins, a city and a nation altogether, they have to give 20 assurances, 20 assurances. Some of them include that they have to give infrastructure guarantees, accommodation guarantees, security guarantees, public service guarantee, government service guarantee, different kinds of guarantees are sought from the government and the cities with respect to Olympics from the committees. And once these assurances are given, then the final evaluation will take place and after that the uh, the host selection would go according to the vote that i told you that is the last step now that would that would be a mere formality i would say once all these processes go through and if if a country is a real a potential candidate for hosting it then they they will go through this very very easily so it all depends on india that how we prepare how we propose our plan for 2036 and how this dialogue goes so as of now if you're thinking that the answer will come tomorrow i would say no the answer most probably will come after 2025 somewhere between 2025 and 2029 now there is a future host commission or a committee which is led by polinda graber kitarovich now that committee would be responsible for looking at the case in fact uh when when asked to the future olympic director jacqueline barrett she said that there are more than 10 countries there are more than 10 countries who are now interested parties india is one among them and india is going to face very stiff competition from countries like uk london has also uh, shown interest istanbul from turkey has shown interest doha has shown interest very important player is jakarta which has shown great interest apart from jakarta Berlin has also shown interest. Recently, Poland has announced that we are also very open to hosting Olympics in Warsaw. Apart from that, Tel Aviv had shown interest, but I don't think uh, I don't think that would be rather possible now. Looking at the uh, looking at the Israel Gaza conflict. Apart from that, Egypt in uh, in hosting in Cairo is also one of the potential interested parties. So India is going to face very stiff competition from some of the developed countries in the world. So let's wait and watch how India is going to propose its bid for 2036, how we will proceed through the continuous dialogue and target dialogue as and when a development comes, we will talk about that. So excitement is, is there in India. As I told you, the work is going on for almost a couple of years in Gujarat, in Ahmedabad. They, uh, they had already shown interest, but nothing was official, but now it has become official. So when will the news come? I would say after 2025 only because in 2025 uh, the international olympic committee elections will be held and after those elections probably we might get we might get uh, a verdict on that will india or shall india host or not again as i told you in general six to seven years before it will come somewhere around uh, 2025 to 2029 we might expect the news all right now let's wait and watch but let's end our discussion with with a pointer with a pointer 
should we host or not yes we have decided it but from an academic perspective we need to understand both sides of the stories right now it sounds very hunky dory that yes olympics in india really great what will happen first of all international recognition will come i agree with that there is going to be uh, international recognition it is going to be a matter of pride that we have hosted international olympics yes apart from that if india hosts it tourists will come in visitors will come in so increased tourism will be seen a lot more employment opportunities will grow because we will be building some games village olympic games village in ahmedabad new sports complex new sports facilities accommodation facilities infrastructural facilities logistical setup so many things are going to come which is going to increase employment opportunities apart from that as i told you sports infra is going to increase in india and if olympics happens in india probably we might we might push other sports as well apart from cricket right that was on a lighter note but still but still uh, if if olympics is held in india then we might look at push or towards other countries or sorry other sports in terms of facilities in terms of trainers in terms of all the other things okay right now i would say in india the focus on sports is highly skewed towards cricket yes in, in last few years uh, we talk about uh, the isl for football we talk about pro kabaddi league etc there are different premier leagues that are running volleyball premier league is running hockey premier league is running but uh, the, the kind of interest the kind of money that is put in and the interest that is generated for cricket we do not see that anywhere else in other sport probably with olympics coming up in the country we might look at more and more promotion because because we will get we will get better global trade we will get better sponsorship we will increase our forex reserves yes so all these things are a good plus point i would say a plus point and all these point out yes host it yes host it but there is a flip side as well there is a flip flip side as well what are the issues with respect to hosting first of all the biggest issue is with respect to money where will the money come from will it come from taxpayers taxpayers money or will it come from exchequer yes majority of it it shall come from exchequer exchequer it's a state exchequer only that means taxpayer shall pay for it but a question is for a country like india which has which has many social obligations we are uh, we are still we still have issues of poverty unemployment i would say a uh, social inequality income inequality we need to get rid of these problems first and we need money we need expenditure we need social schemes for improving things or improving indicators with respect to those and if we pump in money towards olympics then will the social obligations pay, take a back step apart from that how are we going to fund it that is the biggest question are we going to take loans international loans maybe yes where will the money come from first question apart from that we all think that hosting olympics is very profitable yes we we spoke about some of the profits okay we spoke about tourism we spoke about employment but when you look at this the olympics will probably run for say two months two and a half months max yes we will be preparing for the for those olympics for say almost six seven years once it is finalized we'll be putting in more and more effort a lot of money for an event which will run assuming successfully as well for say two three months at max what after that the tourism would be temporary the employment would be temporary if we take huge loans then we would be stuck in a debt cycle so probably if we look at profitability in the short run it is it is quite temporary apart from that in a country like india where we have successfully hosted some programs i would say one of the most successful event that we have hosted is the commonwealth games in 2010 but that commonwealth game itself was plagued with so many issues issues of corruption issues with respect to uh, misuse of administration abuse of administrative power later on the entire games village and the facilities just just being like that right basically uh, expensive infrastructure which is not used in future in fact i read I, I read one of the news which was which was going on a couple of months back where uh, where a uh, is couple they took the dog to walking in one of the one of the uh, stadia that was that was created during the commonwealth games uh, where the athlete, athletes were supposed to practice now <laughs> this is the kind of development that occurs in in india right so probably uh, disuse in future or huge amount of money pumped in for sports complex 
which are later not used that is a, a potential problem that uh, we need to look at apart from that displacement from the host city displacement of residents might happen although from 2020 as i told you the international olympic committee and its subcommittees the future host committee they are going to look at these issues they are going to look at sustainability they are going to look at your plans wherein you are not disrupting the public life only then such things will come so from 2020 i would say not much of these issues but in 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 country like india we have seen sometimes problems being created for example in uh, uh, during g20 during g20 summit meeting uh, we saw some news reports which which said that uh, since the g20 meeting is going on uh, all the beggars all, all the uh, basically people on the streets they were they were uh, arrested or they were not shown they, they were put somewhere else all these things all the dogs were caught okay <laughs> so things like that happened but i i think that sustainability clause will help more and more to avoid this particular problem okay uh, so this is the issue if you look at some of these successful olympics that have been held if, say as i told you a city is decided one of the costliest olympics was beijing beijing in china in uh, 2008 and uh, it did not turn out to be really profitable later on as well with respect to tokyo there were a lot of problems it was supposed to happen in 2020 but later on it happened in 2021 so a lot of uh, losses had to be incurred by that particular city that administration so in the long run it might give you a lot of benefits as i told you it will increase the number of opportunities in the country for sports so there would be long-term benefits for sure but in the short run you will be pumping in billions of dollars to create the infrastructure which might not be used later on that is a potential danger that is a potential issue all right that that we also saw uh with uh i think with the qatar right recently with qatar that the same thing happened qatar i think hosted fifa fifa world cup right football world cup and they created huge infrastructures uh, and i would say uh, more or less it, it is now leading to disuse itself so we need to keep these things in mind and then move forward so there are two sides to every picture that is why uh, i wanted to put this in front of you okay please remember this is not a critical discussion right? many people they say that uh, why why uh, why is this again so, so something is happening something good is happening in the country olympics we are bidding for olympics then why uh, why no for that we are not saying no for that what you must do as as a ups civil as civil service aspirants uh, is that you need to have both sides of the picture and conclude accordingly and i would say yes to a large extent for a country like india the yes or the pros they do outweigh the cons but try to reduce these issues more and more because we need to keep a track of that we need to learn from others mistake we need to learn from other countries who have hosted it if they were not profitable why they were not profitable we can get some solutions we can get some more sponsorship etc such things can be done but i hope from this discussion you have gotten clarity with respect to how a host is selected what is the time period of hosting and what is the process of it apart from that both sides of the story of hosting an olympic if there is any any discussion any update on this we will continue or we'll have an interaction on study iq for sure but right now that is it in this video lecture thank you for watching this jai hind